this this is probably uh, a surprise. Now, now, if we want to check how long it runs, we shouldn't really do the plotting because that is um, slowing us down a hell of a lot. So what we can do again is start equals time, and then we go uh, print time minus start. So what do you reckon? How long is this going to run? Mm. Like, do you remember the previous one ran about two seconds? Mm. I think less than less than a second. Okay, let's see. Boom. Oh. Look at that. So, so this is um, this is uh, let's let's just let's just do this. Let's say two seconds divided by point oh oh. Uh, don't have to be too precise here. Seven seven, right? So we're two hundred roughly two hundred sixty times faster than before. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Like that's a speed up of <laughs> several orders of magnitude. And we get the same results effectively. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's I for mean, sure. Um, um, so, and, and, and so the interesting thing is what, what we've done here is when you think about it, we wrapped our backtest into a mathematical formula. Yeah. And what's really cool is you can do this with an enormous amount of back tests. You can do this really, uh, uh, so, so, so a lot of my work is actually really sitting down and building back tests, um, as mathematical formulas. Because why? Because I need, when, when I do my research, I need incredible performance. And so I can't afford to, you know, you know, just imagine it, um, you know, you, you, your, your back test runs in, in, in two seconds. Um, or, or, you know, you have to do 10,000 of them. Um, you know, uh, if, if you, if you go, uh, you know, point, point, uh, uh, you know, which is basically seven milliseconds, um, times, um, times 10,000, then, that will give us 77 seconds. Uh, if you have uh, 10,000 in two seconds, that's that's 20,000 seconds. That's several hours versus just over a minute. Um, huge difference, right? And so a lot of my work is also thinking about how can I wrap those relative, like, like strategies will become more complex, right? There's, there's relatively complex strategies into something that is more resembling a mathematical formula that spits out the results fairly quickly. And, you know, as, as, as you can see, you know, when, when we uh, go, for example, here, you know, we've got our, um, our sweep again. And, and so if we go and, and let's say, uh, wrap this, here in in our in our sweep so we can just do this and then uh, we instead of 250 we go p and then uh, we you know obviously the plotting takes the longest here so that will take much much longer than everything else but if we run this it'll you know this this is how fast it it will plot compared to what we had before where when dun, 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 dun. So we can do a huge amount of testing in, in a much, much, much quicker time. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty amazing. And it, that, that's, that's really the power of vectorized back testing. Um, and so if you actually compare the speed of this with C++, you will find that you will not actually get that much faster than C++. You can, I, I would really, um, I think the far, you know, like you can maybe achieve some uh, double the speed in, if you program C++ quite well, maybe a little bit more, but but it would be very difficult to get more than that. So even though it's just Python, uh, there's still uh, quite a lot of room for doing very good performance. 
And that will come in really, really handy further down the track. Now, are there any questions? I mean, like, I'm, I'm curious because, you know, like, I'm, I'm coming from, like, C, C++ background. So, like, could you, like, speed it up even more? Or, like, where's, where's the border? Like, how much can you speed it up with, like, Python, so to say? Um, so, so this is probably as almost as fast as it gets. There is a little bit of extra thing. There is this thing called Cython, where you can basically have a Python, which is strongly typed. So you assign integers and, and floats or whatever to variables. But that speed up is comparatively um, small compared to, to what we've done. This is probably almost as fast as it can get. Um, if you have more complex strategies, there's a couple more tricks you can do um, to speed it up. Because sometimes, for example, you can't avoid a loop. And there are packages that um, that are JIT just-in-time compilers. There's one in Python called Number. Um, that's called a JIT compiler. Uh, you know, if you're a computer nerd, you understand what that means. And that uh, that can effectively give you an extra speed up in your program as well. But you need to fulfill certain conditions. Um, so, so JIT only really takes uh, uh, NumPy arrays, uh, so you can't put in lists or, or any other so objects, and so on. So you have to be very specific in the way you program to be able to leverage just-in-time compilers. And they are actually pretty fast. Um, but my personal preference in many, many cases is actually the vectorized uh, backtesting because it's but once you get the hang of it, I mean, you probably go at the moment, like you see this like large chained um, um, thing here and you go, what the hell is that? And and absolutely, that's true. And of course, you could also break this up into smaller segments and it wouldn't really, you wouldn't get a penalty for that. Quite often what happens with me, because I'm not really a, a trained programmer as such, you know, I've been doing programming for decades, but... I end up just <laughs> sometimes if it's just for myself and it's not production code, I, I actually can read my long chains because uh, they're always, once you've done it quite a few times, they're always the same patterns. So you end up just doing this thing and um, and it's not so bad, <laughs> but of course, uh, you know, uh, there's things. And another thing you can do is you can parallelize things as well. This is probably something we can talk about later because in Python, um, multi-threading doesn't necessarily give you a speed advantage because of what you call the global interpreter lock. But if you do a multi-processing, uh, so you basically use different processes, then you can actually get a speed up. So for example, if you had to run you know, a loop like this, you could split it up into um, different processes and then and then run it on different processes in parallel and then collect the results so mm -hmm. so that would be another way to speed things up mm -hmm.